Today, uh, if we were to title this sermon, it would be called this, We're Here to Get Involved. So if you take notes and all those things, I'll say some different things about underlining and circling and all that, but the title of today is We Are Here to Get Involved, and we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll start there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We are here to get involved. Have you ever been given uh, an assignment or asked to do something that was pretty serious, but you didn't take it seriously? I'm sure we all have. I have, I probably have more than I care to list, but one comes to mind that's that's entertaining is in college, right? In college, uh, I worked a job uh, with my friend Jeff. We uh, were putting ourselves through college, so we worked different jobs, and this one particular job was at a restaurant, and one day we'd work most of the day, and it was getting close to nine o'clock when the restaurant would close, and our manager came up to us and said, "Uh, Jeff's, the two Jeff's, I need you guys to do something for me. I was in the men's room, and I saw a footprint on the back of the toilet, like the top part. And he said, I need you guys to go open the drop ceiling and see if anybody's hiding up there. And so Jeff and I were like, of course. We've never been on a manhunt before. Why not start today, right? So we started walking that way. We grabbed, um, grabbed a ladder and uh, made our way to the bathroom, and we climbed up there, and, you know, To the best of my uh, recollection, I'm fairly certain I was wearing an apron. So I I was fully prepared for whatever was going to happen, right? Uh, We pull back the thing and we, the the drop ceiling, and we start looking around. And there's light coming from the bottom. There's no light up there. There's a lot of shadows. And Jeff and I are just like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. There's nobody hiding up here. How's this even possible? So we just start mocking a would be hiding out guy, you know, like, hey, bad guy. And just having fun, and we're looking at each other like, man, let's go. So after a minute or so, we close the lid, and we take the ladder back, and we go back and report to our manager. like, listen, man, saw the footprint. We didn't see anybody up there. He's like, you didn't see anybody. Like, we didn't see anybody. He's like, okay. So he walks us to the door, lets us out, and locks the door behind us. The restaurant is closed for the evening. Kid you not, he told us the next day, not five minutes later, a gunman drops through that same ceiling, puts everybody in the freezer, and robs the place, right? I got to tell you, the next day at work was awkward, right? Like, hey, I'm really sorry we didn't nab the gunman, right? Like, I'm not sure what the expected outcome was supposed to be. Everybody was fine. It wasn't, it was a huge deal, but then it wasn't. My point is, we were asked to do something. We learned a valuable lesson on how to take some things seriously, Well, on another level this morning, as we look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're challenged to take what the Lord tells us seriously about who we are and what we're supposed to do. So if you have your Bible, 2 Corinthians Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to start in verse 17, and we're going to work through. So we're going to look at a bunch of scriptures today, so just keep your Bible handy. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. Everything, verse 18, is from God, who has reconciled us to himself. Circle that word, reconciled, underline, highlight, however you do it. We're going to spend some time talking about what that means today, but I I don't want us to miss the importance of the definition of reconciled. Reconciled means this. It means to be made right or at peace with God. To be made right or at peace with God. With God. Reconciled is not me believing that there's a God. Reconciled is not me okay with the idea of God or even me thinking, hey, God must be a pretty good guy. That, that is not what it means. It means that we have been made right, which means we have put our, we have recognized that we're sinners, repented of our sin, and put our faith and trust in Jesus, who is the only one who can make us right with God. The old is gone, the new has come. We continue reading in verse. 19, that is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Underline those words, message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors. Another key word. What's an ambassador? I mean, we get it, right? Ambassadors between the countries. It's an authorized representative, someone who can speak for someone else. Here's the idea that we are messengers, that we are ambassadors for God and for reconciliation. 
Verse 20, therefore we're ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. If we had to summarize these verses, we could kind of do it in two words. And our, our whole time today kind of hangs on this one verse. We'll look at a bunch of verses, but it kind of hangs on this whole idea that we have been reconciled to God and we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. So here's the two words. If you love alliteration and think every sermon has to have it, here's your alliteration, all right? The first word is message. We, as Christ followers, have been giving a message, been given a message, and that message is the message of reconciliation, that we are to be made right or at peace with God. One theologian put it like this. He said, this is the great exchange. This is where Jesus took upon himself our sin, our shame, our guilt, and he gives us his righteousness so that positionally we are in Christ. We belong to God. We have been made right with God. These verses we see, we've been given a message, but here's the second thing. We've been given a ministry, that we are an ambassador for God, that regardless of your age, your socioeconomic status, where you're from, what job you have, what school you go to, regardless of all those things, we are an ambassador and our message is be reconciled to God. In these verses, we see God is calling us to do what he's already been doing, right? But this isn't the first time we see that in scripture. In fact, little crowd participation here. I think there are times that we've understood this concept already when God says things like this, you be holy for I am You forgive because you have been forgiven. So there are times where God is calling his character and saying, listen, this is who I am, and I'm inviting you, I'm asking you to be like me.